Right. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone else? You have a question? Yes. Implementing. What do you do? You follow. Who do you follow? You follow Yeshua. How do you follow Yeshua? How do you follow Yeshua? Hmm? You're watching and you follow? Not just watching, you have to do. You have to do. You have to see. He walks like that. I'll try to walk like that. He thinks like that. I'll have to think like that. Every time you try to think yourself differently, you're going to remember. Why don't I try thinking like that? To be in sohbat, in communication, in jamaat, that is important. Because that is the time that you're going to get the real training too. You're coming, and you're trying to learn. As much as you observe, as much as you do, that much you're going to get. It doesn't mean you're going to have to stay here for a long time to get it. The more you observe, the more intelligent you are, the easier you're going to pick up certain things. Because what? You're not being lazy. Tariqat Sufism is not for lazy people or people who don't think. Always you have to question. After you question, then you put it in your life. You sit and you think. And that time, closer that you are moving to your share, more he's going to train you. Then you'll come to a time when there are certain things that you do, and he's going to guide you. Maybe in the beginning, he says, very good. Later, he says, eh, it's not so good. Then where is our ego? Our ego is going to say, mm, I'm doing so much. And he's saying it's not so good. But what is, the, what is he there to do? To praise you or to guide you? He's not doing it for himself. He's there to make you to rise to higher stations, to better understanding. And there may be some understandings that you don't see. Try as you, you're trying, trying, trying to legally, uh, you know, logically reasoning it out. But we're all creatures of habit, no? You think it's so easy to break a habit just because you think you want to break it? It's not. Here we're talking about thought, we're talking about attitude, we're talking about behavior, we're talking about intentions now. You understand? It is a pretty much a systemic change. Now, later you'll do something and he may say everything you do is wrong. Then, you have to sit and you have to understand and you have to know. How do you want to do it? Do you want to do it with yourself, by yourself? Then it's okay. But if you want to do it the way that the friends of Allah do it, it's not going to be so easy. If you want to do it the way that the prophets, they do it, it's going to be very difficult. It's difficult for your ego. You understand? Fasting, for example. We finished the fasting of one month. Fasting for some also. They fast in certain days that we just passed. The days of Qurban. Fast. Because you fast on the day before Qurban, it expiates two years of sins, wrong doings that you have done, the year before and the year that is coming. Now, fasting is to stay away from food and drink and certain other activities from sunrise to sundown. That is the basic level of fasting. Anyone can do that. Correct? Now, that is a fasting of your animal self. You tie up an animal, don't give it food and water. That animal is also fasting. You're just controlling your animal self. That's all. 
But we are more than an animal self. We have that is called a nafs as well, the ego. And there is a fasting of the spirit. Because we are not our animal selves. We are a spirit. We have been sent to assume this form just for a certain number of years in this. But before that, for thousands of years, maybe millions of years, yes. In the time before time, we existed without this form. And we were not in need of food and drink. And in the future, we are not going to be in need of food and drink after we pass from this world. So, then there is a fasting of those who say, it is not just staying away from food and drink, now I must watch what I speak. I must fast from saying foolish wrong things, hurtful things, unnecessary things. It doesn't have to be bad. It can also be good, but it's unnecessary. Foolish talk. Because now this condition of fasting is to remember your Lord, to be in remembrance of your Lord. Now you're going to see fasting, just food and drink, but if I don't remember my Lord, what's the use of fasting then? So those ones who have high himmet, they have high spiritual ambition, they say it's not just about food and drink, which so many people they do, then after the sun comes down, they jump into the food and the drink. They have a feast. What's the use of a feast after you fasted? Isn't the whole point for you to try to curb your ego? Now you're going to say, I must fast. I must watch what I speak. Not only that, I must watch what I see. Things that are not pleasing to my Lord, I'm going to be very careful and stay away from. I'm going to fast from what I hear. I'm going to fast from the actions that I'm doing. So now, with all those senses, let's say, you're trying to stop from doing all the wrong things. But there's a fast that is higher than that. And that fast now, if you are forgetting about your Lord, then that fast is not so good. It's not just being a good person, but it is to always be in remembrance and in need of your Lord, to be in close sohbet with your Lord. You understand? So now there are different, different levels. You want to learn manners. Don't look at what you're already good at. Look at what you're bad at. Fix that. Because the enemy does not come through the front door. The enemy always comes through the weakest part of the house. The enemy always attacks the weakest link in the chain. So look to that. Maybe for some people, it's when I get arrogant. I get defensive. I'm not going to listen to anything. Oh, it happened because I was young, this happened, that happened. You can have any excuse that you want, but there is a weakness there. Somebody points out that you did something wrong, you're going to be very defensive, and you're not going to accept anything, even if it were true. Or your mm, weak point is that you're a nice person, you're a good person, but you're not being say, generous enough to people, or you're too attached to the things that you love and you don't share. That happens too. I don't necessarily just mean money. It can be your time. It can be your clothes. It can be your car. It can be something that you fall in love with that is just... You are attached so much to it. And that becomes a weakness. And the sheikh now, just like a doctor, is going to have uh, read you, diagnose you. He's going to say the weakness here is here is here is here. Sometimes it's going to be straight. Sometimes it's not going to be. So once you know that, if you realize that, and this is the way of subtlety also, not sheikh, and he's not going to say you have a this, you have that, this, that. We all have it. When he talks about proudness of a person or stubbornness of a person, we all share it. Now it is our responsibility to say, now where is my proudness coming from? Where is this heedlessness? 
I become heedless. I'm just so careless, heedless. Where is this coming from? You look at that and you fix. That is when tafakkur enters. Meditation. Not to sit and to pretend that you are someplace else, but to look at your life and to look at your day and to look at your intention and to look at your action. Understand? And that time, look at your action, then look at what is <laughs> our Shah is showing us. This is also a subtle way. More you are in close contact with the Shah, more he's able to adjust certain things. Sometimes he's going to say, sometimes he's not going to say. But he's working on you. May Allah accept our ibadat and our sincere actions, inshallah. We are weak ones. We're not claiming to be anything. But important, we have to be sincere. We have to try as much as we can. Anything good that is coming, is coming from our Lord. Anything that is bad, it is coming from our ego. May Allah forgive us, inshallah. Al-Fatiha.